Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys an idea about what it's like to uh, build a rocket here in Kerbal Space Program. I've been playing around with it for a few days now, so um, let me show you what I've learned. Grabbing a command module, I have a little process I kind of worked out where I like to uh, put certain things on in certain order. Um, having fuel for RCS thrusters and also having a way to stabilize so you can do the regular SAS module, Stability Augmentation System, or you can do the Steadlier. Um, this one really locks it down and holds it really steady when you're in outer space. And you don't have to rely on your thrusters as much. So, um, you can change your symmetry mode, so if you want to put in on all the different sides, you can put all your thrusters in there. RCS thrusters and so on, like this. Of course, you need to remember to leave room for ladders if you plan on ha doing any uh, extravehicular activities. So, um, and then also if you want to put your landing gear anywhere, you should probably leave room for those. Ladders. You can click them on just like this under the modules. You can also get an extending ladder, the TELUS Mobility Enhancer. So it's not always out like that. It does fold up inside. It's good to have a parachute. It helps you land and not kill any of your little Kerbal astronauts. And then you have a variety of fuel tanks. There's a little one. The 400, or there's the big one, which is the 800. There's also uh, the solid rocket booster, which once it goes on, it doesn't turn off. Um, and then, you know, it burns at full thrust. And then you just kind of use that to get you into space. It does have a lot of lift at 250 max power. Um, it's also good to have, structurally, a stack decoupler so you can separate engines in different stages. So for now, let's just do the regular liquid fuel tank. And I'm going to put a liquid fuel engine on the bottom. And then I'm also going to add a gantry here on the side. So check your actions over here on the right side. Release the gantry, ignite the engine, and then when you're ready to finish up, you can separate your command module from your fuel tanks and your rockets, and then finally the parachute. So let's head out to the launch pad. Yes, we know there's debris from a previous launch. Let's go ahead and clear it and go. Looks like it's nighttime. Yep. You can see some of the Milky Way there in the sky. And um, so with a liquid engine, you have to throttle it up. So you'll notice down here, the throttle. And then at that point, you can hit the space bar and launch. Um, using your SAS control, you can just hit the T button. And that should keep this pretty stable on the navigation wall. But you could look around while your rocket is flying. You can see your acceleration your altitude, where you are in the atmosphere, how high up, your vertical acceleration, things like that. How much fuel you've got left. If you want to see precise fuel numbers, you can go to your resources and see here on your tank how much you've got. You can also adjust your throttle if necessary, down or up. That obviously affects how high you go and how fast you go. So we're getting pretty high up into the sky here, 8,000 meters. Jebediah Kerman is our astronaut. He's having a lot of fun. We can go inside and see what he's seeing. 
Uh, everything in here is functional for the most part. I mean, these buttons, we can turn this on and off. Uh, the throttle, we can adjust. Um, sounds like something... We're out of fuel. Let's take a look at what that looks like out here. So we're still going up. Altitude is still gaining. We can separate our engine stage, hitting the space bar. We can check the map and we can see how high we expect to go. So the apoapsis, the apogee of the arc, is around 48,000 meters. Since we have no more acceleration, that number's dropping off as well. So that stage got us basically 48 kilometers into the air. So we can go back to what everything looks like here and see that. There's the launch pad, all of the stuff down there from previous launches. He's still having a fun ride, it looks like. So we can adjust the pitch and attitude and everything. Of course, our stabilization brings us back to our original orientation. So if we turn it off, we can turn and then our inertia, our, our inertia keeps us rolling. You can temporarily use it to stabilize. Though if we wanted to get our orientation set with the horizon, we can certainly do that. Now that we're on the descent, you can see how fast we're dropping, what our current altitude is. If we wanted to use RCS thrusters, we can turn those on and then we can use them to move around different things. And we can use our stabilization to get us back where we need to be. So we pretty much went up, came back down. And I'm going to go ahead and deploy the chute. Air chute is out. It will fully deploy at approximately 500 meters above the ground. We can still see our fuel tank and engine that we used to lift off. If we wanted to go inside too, we can see our ground radar, which shows us how far it is to the ground. Radar altitude. Alright, parachute is out, sounds like. I'm also going to extend the landing gear. Here's that ladder I mentioned earlier. retract it and extend it whenever you feel like it. And you can see the space plane hangar and the assembly hangar and the tracking station launch pad, all that over there. So we pretty much went straight up and right back down. And we have touchdown. That's it. You can end the flight and you're done.